In this tutorial we will cover the Gaia Runtime Tools available in Section 3 of the Gaia Manager. Player Control, Post Processing, Skies, Water, Wind and Audio. These are objects that can remain in your game for the final build and may also be directly visible to the end user. Player Controller adds a player character controller to the scene. This is very useful during the design phase to test the player experience and the quality of your terrain. The available choices for player control are first person, flying camera, third person, XR controller, a controller for virtual and augmented reality projects, and a custom setting that allows you to reference your own custom player character and camera and make it compatible with the Gaia runtime systems. Once the player has been created, you can still switch to different player types even during runtime. Skies creates a sky and lighting setup for your scene. The available options are morning, day, evening, night. And this sets up a static HDRI skybox with a fixed time of day and lighting. Default uses the default empty Unity skybox with some basic lighting. Procedural World Sky is an advanced sky system with time of day, layered clouds and weather features. Or you can select none and Gaia will not change the current sky and lighting setup. When post-processing is checked, Gaia will add a global post-processing volume to your scene. Water adds an ocean water plane to your scene at the height of the sea level with various presets for the look of the water surface. Underwater effects adds post-processing effects when the camera goes under the sea level to give the impression that the camera is filming in a body of water. Wind zone sets up a unity wind zone for the scene. Wind type sets a preset representing calm or stormy weather for the created wind zone. Ambient audio adds playback of an ambient audio loop for the player character. This works both during design and runtime. Click Create Runtime. Close the manager, expand Gaia Runtime and select Gaia Player. Set the controller type to first person. I want the player to spawn over here. We can set the player position to the camera position. Click Move Player to Camera. Roll out Auto Depth of Field. Make sure it's enabled. In first person mode, turn on Ignore Player to avoid unwanted interactions with the player's collision volume. Expand the player culling settings. Enable layer culling. Set the profile to match the biome. The layer of this asset is PW Object Medium. With Gaia Player selected, turn on In Editor. We can decrease the values to see the effect. Set PW Object Medium to 40. In the Shadow Culling settings, set the value to 20. As we navigate towards and away from the stable, we can see the object culling and the shadow culling coming into effect. The first set of cylinders is 20 units away from the stable. The second set is 40 units. Click Revert to Defaults. Then set PW Object Large to 512 and the Shadow to 256. PW Object Large includes the trees on the terrain. We can change the field of view for first person, select first person character, and slide the field of view to 80. Select FPS Controller. We have a range of attributes that alter the player movement. Select Gaia Player and switch to third person. Select Third Person Controller. And here are the settings that control the player movement. Set the speed to 3 and the jump power to 12. Select Main Camera and slide the field of view to 80. Press Play. And you can modify these settings at runtime.
select Gaia Lighting. Set the profile to Morning. Click the plus symbol to create an editable profile. And rename the profile Gaia Sample Morning 1. And click Save. All of the static lighting profile settings have the same attributes. Exposure. Independent exposure for the skybox. Rotate the sun. We can rotate the skybox. And change our shadow, ambient and fog settings. Select Procedural World Sky Lighting Profile and enable Time of Day. We can see that the single attribute values are now replaced by curves that define the value over a time range. We can see the red line indicating the current time. If we scrub the hour back and forth, we can see the peaks and troughs of the curves coinciding with the sunrise and sunset. Set the time to 1900 hours, locate the moon in the sky, Click the plus symbol to create an editable profile. Open the fog gradient curve. Manipulate the point on the curve closest to the time of day. Because many of these attributes are driven by a curve over time, you will find that you cannot manipulate these attributes directly. For example, if we select the directional light, the sun, you will not be able to directly change the intensity, as it is currently being driven by the curve in the procedural world's lighting system. Select Gaia Audio. Here is where we can adjust the levels of the weather and ambient audio. Let's enable zone gizmos so we can see them in the editor. The gizmos represent audio zones spawned from your biome. Set your player control to flying camera. Select Gaia Audio and click play. In the editor, we can see that as the player moves around, certain audio zones are being triggered. And in the inspector, we can see what the zones are and their volume. When using the procedural world skies, we can access the Gaia weather system. Select Gaia weather. In the inspector, we can see our time of day settings. Settings for wind, a seasonal color tint for the sunlight, controls to determine what elements will be affected by weather, snow, rain, and thunder. We'll look at the water now. Just to simplify, let's set the lighting system to day. Select Gaia Water. The Water Profile menu lets you switch the preset. Select Clear Blue Ocean as our starting point. Click the plus symbol to create a new profile. Rename it Clear Green Ocean. Clear the Baked Color Depth Ramp and click on the Water Gradient Color. You can use a saved preset or modify the gradient. Choose an appropriate texture resolution and click Save Texture. 